Hi guys, I'm Joe Drake, and I'm so excited because joined with me today is Tyler Henry. Hi. How are you? Doing great, thank you for having me. Yeah. So you were just telling me being in New York is an interesting experience. It is. Being a medium, tell us about that. Yeah, well I mean the city has lots of like sights, sounds, smells, yeah. and then with the sixth sense it's like a whole other level of stimulus. Right. So wow. it's actually very overwhelming. I can feel the energy of the people um, above me, below me, right. to the side. And is it worse outside or inside? It's kind of just all over. It's okay. just like a, a hyper awareness of like just a lot going on. Wow. So what is feeling in this building? In the building? Not or in like, this room? Not much, but not much. it's just kind of like, the way I would describe it is like static, kind of like having constant static. And okay. some places you go, it's like stronger than others. Right. Aside from the static, is there a physical feeling that you're uh, going through doing a reading? I, well, in a reading, it, it's very different than when I just kind of go about my day-to-day -day life. Right. I always say my sixth sense uses the other five senses to communicate. So, okay. for example, when I'm doing a reading, I might get a physical sensation that corresponds with how someone died. Right. So if someone had a heart attack, I might get a chest pain. And then other times, um, I might get a smell, I might hear a noise, I okay. might have an internal vision. And I basically have to take all of those impressions and turn it into a relevant message. Because oh, yeah. I'm big on validation and specific right. information. How, how can you differentiate when you just happen to have a chest pain? Right. Like, when do you need a Tums? Yeah, or is it? exactly. I've actually had times where it's, it's been a struggle to discern between my own physical pain and the client's physical pain. Okay. And there was actually a situation uh, right when I started working professionally where I had a client I was gonna go do a reading for her and my kidneys were hurting and I was complaining to my mom and she's like, well, do you need to go to the hospital? Cause it was like crazy kidney pain. It's like, no, let's just see how I'm doing after the reading. I go to the reading, the woman had kidney failure. And when I communicated this to her, the pain in my kidneys went away. Wow. So it's like, That's so interesting. definitely an adjustment. Yeah. If I'm still feeling a sensation even after a reading, then I know it's usually from okay. there. And are you able to shut it off when a reading's over? Can Is it like a light switch? It's kind of like tuning in and, and tuning out. Okay. Um, there's still some degree of rec receptivity of just residual energy, residual information. Right. But I have certain processes that I do, like scribbling and meditating before a reading, okay. that kind of open me up in oh, a way that I try to not be open when I'm just going about my day-to-day right. life. Okay. One book out, one coming. Yep. You're starting live shows. Yes. <laughs> How was that experience? It's been amazing. You know, I've actually done 23 this past oh, wow. year all across the United States and uh -huh. Canada. And it's great. I basically stand in front of like two to 5,000 people. And wow. the first part of the show just focuses on me sharing a little bit more than what you get to see on the TV show. They yeah. kind of get my story, how I came into this. Right. And then we open it up into a live reading and I basically usually read about seven to 10 people yeah. and just kind of go out into the audience. And Has there been a memorable moment in these live shows so oh far? Oh my gosh, so many. I mean, every every single one yeah. has something. I actually just remember a reading I did for a, a woman and I, was, I saw this man getting flung from a, like what looked like a cherry picker or something. It was really confusing. And I kept getting a nickname reference of bear. And that's the only two pieces of information I was getting. And I'm like, I'm seeing bear and like being flung from like a cherry picker or something. So when you, sorry to yeah, interrupt, yeah. when you say you see it, yes. do you actually see? Yeah. So, in the same way I would see it if I saw it in real life. So it's different than like us looking at that flower. It's okay. kind of like when you're in school and you're daydreaming and you're kind of ah. just like, uh, your mind's wandering and you're kind of having like uh, a partial experience here and then partial experience in your head. Right. It's okay. kind of like that. So okay. it kind of gets split. And so I was communicating this bear thing and getting flung and I pointed at this lady. She stood up and she said, I had a friend who got flung off of the top of one of those devices that takes you like to trim trees. You know, he was like a yeah, tree cutter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this is the very top and he got flung off because of a technical error. And his best friend who was there was nicknamed Bear. So his wow. best friend who was on the scene with him who he was working with was named Bear. Wow. And like those connections made sense. Are you able to figure out how spirit why that particular person came through. I mean, in a room question. of thousands of people, yeah. there's got to be a waiting line. Exactly, right? for sure. I actually, I, I think that whoever comes through, it's meant to connect to. So I'm a big believer in synchronicity. Okay. And so I think that like the people that get brought forward are getting brought forward for a reason. And even if everybody doesn't receive a reading, yeah. I think we can find a sense of healing by seeing these other people's connections. Definitely. Because if their loved ones are around them, our loved ones are around us. Yeah, so. that's amazing. Hey guys, I'm Tyler Henry from Hollywood Medium, and you're watching OK Magazine.